All right, it's Tuesday. That means we are linking up with Karen Rose. And we are talking about today the understanding the digital nomad. Karen, good morning. Good morning, Kijan. How you doing, boss? I'm all right. I'm not giving any trouble today. This is all you. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, say every time you see me, I'm giving some kind of trouble. I'm trying to behave myself. <laughs> Why are you doing, man? How you doing? I said, look trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Our thing. So what, what, what are we talking about today? What's a digital nomad? Yeah, man. So the digital nomad, I mean, we have been hearing a lot of countries across the world um, opening up their tourism sectors and they're bringing in what's called the digital nomad visas. Now, typically, um, people have been doing a, or living a digital nomad lifestyle, being able to just work from the laptop, travel from country to country, spend a month here, two months there and then bounce around. But what the world has been doing since the pandemic, but in 2024, a lot of countries have been doubling down, is actually giving out digital nomad visas. And it kind of ranges differently from country to country. But essentially, this new visa is inviting more people to come and settle in that country for an extended period of time whilst being able to work remotely, not pay taxes in the country that they're going to be settling in. They would pay taxes back at home, but they can come and settle in that country and work remotely for extended stays. I guess the if you're not making taxes, paying taxes in that country that you're working in, the hope is that you're spending, you're contributing to the economy in some way because you do live there. So they that's give out they give out take. Exactly it. So when that's you, exactly so, it. So, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. No, I was saying like so when you when you're doing this, what kind of job do you have to have if all you're doing is sitting on, on a laptop all day? Because I mean, you can't be a mechanic, you can't be, you know, very hands-on jobs. You have to be a very specific type of worker for this job. Yeah, so again, with the world, right, the world has been opening up more remote opportunities where you are able to work for a company um, remotely, or you could be a freelancer specializing in services like web development, customer service, um, app development, software development, um, search engine optimization, content creation, video editing, copywriting. There's a list of skills that allow you to freelance, but then we have more companies that are able to tap into the global talent base by allowing remote, uh, remote positions to be done. So the goal now is, right, we know that when you're living in a country, your dollar might not go as far as you would like in that country, as we can see right here in Trinidad and Tobago, right? So what people are doing now to kind of hack the system in a way, and I, and I use that, I use hack the system very loosely, but the goal now for a lot of people is how do I get paid in a higher currency, but live in a country where that where that currency, where that currency exchange benefits me. So if I'm making, you know, uh, a, a U.S. dollar over here, can I live in a country like a Singapore or a Thailand or an Indonesia where that dollar is going way further and the cost of living is much cheaper in those countries that now I could live a better quality of life? At the same time, you are having to worry about, there are downsides to all of this. You've, you've seen like the explosion of tourism and how it may help, I mean, or hurt, sorry, those countries that may not be ready for the influx of people coming in to take over the best apartments and all, all of those things. But there, there's a give or take with everything in, in life, isn't there? Absolutely. And this is where you, you really have to do your homework. So again, we're seeing a lot more digital nomad visas being opening up across the world, right? Right here in the Caribbean, the majority of our Caribbean countries have opened up their own digital nomad visas from Barbados, Antigua, St. Vincent, Bermuda, Jamaica. They all have their digital nomad visas as well because, again, they want people to come and settle here and take their money from their home, from their home countries and spend it locally. So it is a give and take. You do have to look at each country and see what country it makes the most sense for you. But again, this is a great opportunity for people in the Caribbean because one of the things that we lack, remember, we still have a lot of people who have never left the island, who've never even gone to Bago. And we are trying to, we're, 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 we're having these problems in Trinidad that need a new perspective, specializations. And some of these things happen when our human resources can go and spend some time outside in other countries, see how things are working and 
being solved in other countries, they can then get that perspective and that new um, skill set and then come back into the country to begin tackling some of the problems here. So it's a great way for people to just get out, spend some time, even if it's on a short term basis, basis, like a six months to a year, and then still come back into the fold. And, and you were talking about people's perspective. What about the employers? Back during the pandemic, people just wanted you to work. So if you were working on a remote beach somewhere, it doesn't matter. You know, stay, stay home, stay safe. You remember that? And yeah, yeah. It was, it was fine. Cause, but now we find employers want you to come back. They want to see at your desk. They want to stand up over your shoulder. How, how have they been reacting in your experience to now that the pandemic is mostly over? Uh, people still wanting to do this type of nomad life. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, there there are a lot of companies that remember they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in physical real estate, and they don't want that to go to waste. So they have been bringing back uh, they've been bringing back their employees into the fold. A lot of employees have been pushing back and saying, "No, we don't want to go back to the lifestyle." But again, we know companies have been bringing back into the into the fold. That doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of companies that are offering remote working positions. Um, if you can get a remote working job, again, that opens you up because now you're no longer limited to the opportunities that are only available right here in Trinidad and Tobago. You can now start looking at companies in the US, in Europe, in Canada, get on LinkedIn, look for the companies that are hiring remote jobs. You can apply for these jobs and again, that money might go far in Trinidad, but if you want to get an even better quality of life and a new perspective, now is a good time to start looking at countries like Malta, Thailand, Singapore, in, um, El Salvador, Panama, Colombia. Again, wherever you want to go in the world, start looking into those digital nomad visas because they're there for a reason. And again, I think right now we're in a position where we need more of our Caribbean people to get more perspective, mm -hmm. see how things are done in other countries, take that experience and then come back. And this is a great way to be able to do that. Absolutely. I, I, I have been chastised for saying this, but I feel like it should be mandatory. At least one year of your life, you have to go somewhere. Just go, just go. Just see things. You have to get out of just your see hometown. Just go. Just travel for yes, a little while. Yes, yeah, yes. go on. I mean, and again, I've made my major jump coming from Canada to Trinidad. So I've been here for about 10 years now. My perspective has changed. How I teach, what I show up and, and show people and educate businesses on is mainly based on how we do things in a first world country like Canada and just utilizing localized tools and services to achieve that objective. So even me, I'm also looking at where else in the world could I go to gain mm -hmm. new perspectives to come back to the Caribbean and solve Caribbean problems. And I do like that aspect of personal responsibility in terms of go online. Online is the internet is good for more and just rabs and memes, but go and find those jobs. When you when you send in the meme and you rabs in the person on Twitter, hey, what do you, what do you actually do for a living? What is actually how how are you able to do this where you are? Have those conversations and don't just sit back on your couch and the government not doing anything for we. Like they, they, uh, there are opportunities there. There's lots of opportunities. And I, again, I, I like how you gave that context. There's lots of opportunities. We are no longer just victims sitting here, sitting here doom and gloom with no opportunities. The fact of the matter is, we have never had this many opportunities in the world. So you could be right here in Trinidad and none of your clients or the work that you do is happening in Trinidad. You could be working for companies remotely. Again, you don't have to physically be here. You can decide to work for companies even in Trinidad freelance with clients in Trinidad and Tobago and still go take that time, take a digital nomad visa, take some time, go out, see the world. And again, come back into the fold, a much better person where your personal development is going to help you be a better citizen of the country as well. Absolutely. And I know a lot of people say, well, where can I get more information? No, Google is your friend. <laughs> We're not doing yes. this one for you. We're not doing this one for you today. Go. You, and you know what? And again, I have put out videos. I've put out articles. Again, there's a lot of information. Just type in 
digital nomad visas. You can even type in digital nomad visas and Karen Rose and you'll see I've compiled a list of over 60 destinations offering digital nomad visas, some skill sets, the cost of living in some of these countries. You can live in a fully furnished one bedroom condo in a Thailand, Singapore, and all you need to be making is less than 10,000 TT dollars where you could live a really comfortable lifestyle. Even if it's for a short time, there's a lot of information out there and there's never been a better time to do what we're talking about today than today. Karen Rose, always great talking to you and the people out always there. Always a hope, pleasure. I hope they're listening. I hope they're listening. Go out there. Go out there. See things. As young people Go out there. See yeah, things. And... Thanks again, Kijan. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Another quick break. TMB on CNC3.